Time for the video problems on acceleration. So I put the video problems online, and you can find them, print them out, love them like a kitten. A sports car is said to be able to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7 seconds. I don't know if they advertise this way anymore, but when I was a kid they used to say 0 to 60 in 7 seconds or something. So whatever, fine. What is the acceleration of this car in meters per second squared? This is mostly a unit conversion problem, actually. But let's just start. So first of all, all we've got here is a speed. So we're really talking about the magnitude of acceleration um, and the impl implicit, uh, the implicit, the implication, that's the word I'm looking for, is that the car is moving in a straight line. So let's just talk about the x component of acceleration. We'll say that the y component of velocity is zero, the z component of velocity is zero. So what we have is, the x acceleration is delta vx over delta t, and delta, well, 0 to 60 miles per hour, that says it's going 60 miles per hour minus 0, so that's how much the velocity changed, sorry, the speed, well, the x component of velocity, divided by 7 seconds. Hey, done. Well, let's do 60 divided by 7 real quick, just so we have the number. Uh, please turn on. Thank you. 67 divided by 8.5714 to too many significant figures. Really, we only have one significant figure because of the 7, but I'm going to keep two just for fun, and I'm writing extra ones right here. So this is miles per hour per second. That is an acceleration unit, right? Speed over time, MPH over second is an acceleration unit, so there you go. That's miles per hour per second, but that's not the unit we want it in. We really want this in meters per second squared. So let's do the unit conversion, 8.5714 miles per hour times seconds. We want to convert miles to meters, so I looked up 1609.34 meters in a mile. Yay, and now I can cancel miles. And I also know there are 3600 seconds and that's not the way I want to do it. I want to do it like this. There is one hour in 3,600 seconds. How did I figure out I wanted the 3,600 on the bottom? Well, I want to get rid of the hour. So the hour had to be on the top. And that's what works. Right? I'm just multiplying by one. 1609.34 meters equals one mile. So I'm dividing the same thing by itself. So that's one. One hour equals 3,600 seconds. So that's one. So I'm not changing the number. Yes, I'll change the number, but I'm not changing the value because the number has units on it. And I'll be left with meters over seconds over seconds, meters per second squared. That's what we want. So I multiply this by 1609.34 and I divide it by 3,600 and I get 3.83 now let's go down to those two significant figures I told you about before. 3.8 meters per second squared. How does this compare to gravity? Well, remember, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is a little more than a third of gravity. So, you know, if you step in a car and you really step on it, you feel yourself pushed back into your seat, you're being pushed back. Um, so let's suppose that you weigh 150 pounds. I weigh a lot more than that. Let's suppose you weigh 150 pounds. If you're being accelerating at the rate of gravity, and we'll talk about this more when we get to force, it's like you're being pushed back into your seat with a weight of 50 pounds against you when you accelerate this fast in your car. Anyway, that's the number. That is the first problem. Second problem. A hockey puck is sliding on ice because that is where hockey pucks slide. Why? All right. You're going to discover I do this a lot this semester. I say something is sliding on ice. The implication is, is that there's basically no friction. That's not perfect. You know, if things slide on ice, they eventually stop. But you also know, if you've ever tried to walk on ice, that there's a lot less friction than there is on, say, pavement. So ice is going to be code for, hey, there's no friction here, which doesn't really matter for this problem. There's a magnetic field, oh my god, pushing this hockey puck around somehow. Ah, that means we don't have to worry about exactly how it works. Next semester, we'll talk about how this might actually work, but that's later. At time t equals 5 seconds, the hockey puck is moving due north. So at t equals 5 seconds, our hockey puck is going due north at a speed of 3.5 meters per second. And at time t equals 7.0 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and write in the digits we have here. 
at time t equals 7.0 seconds, the hockey puck is moving due west. So sometime later, the hockey puck is now moving that way at a speed of 3.5 meters per second. If I define east as the plus x direction and north as the plus y direction, and you notice this is something I actually recommend you do is draw little pictures to help you make sure you understand what's going on here. If you define east as plus x and north as plus y, there's a lot of text here. Once I've drawn the pictures, you can kind of see what's going on, and it's a good way to unpack all the text. What is the average acceleration of the hockey puck between t equals 5 and t equals 7 seconds? I'll come back to that average in a moment, but let's start. With the definition of acceleration is delta v vector over delta t. Now, I told you this equation only works for short intervals delta t. Is 2 seconds a short interval? I don't know. Short compared to what? Short compared to my age? Yes. Short compared to 10 seconds? No, it's a fifth of 10 seconds. That's a lot. So what do you mean by short? What it really means is short compared to how long it takes for the acceleration to change significantly. And I haven't told you anything about whether it's a constant acceleration or not. But it also turns out that you can figure out the average acceleration, also this one, v equals delta r over t. You can figure out the average velocity over any time interval so it won't necessarily be the instantaneous velocity at any moment, but it is the average over that time interval by using this equation. So since all I'm asking for is the average acceleration, it's the same as what it would have been were it constant. If you take the average of the same thing for a long time, you get that thing. And that's what this will give us. So let's go ahead and do this. So the average acceleration is delta v, well, that's v final minus v initial, divided by delta t is t final minus t initial. So I've just defined vf and vi. Well, what is vf? Well, this is the final here. So I would say that vf, it's going in the negative x direction. So it's minus 3.5 comma 0 comma 0 meters per second is vf. And that is a full on vector. And vi is here. That's vi is moving in the y direction, so it's 0, 3.5, 0 meters per second. Nothing is moving in z. Great, and then delta t, well tf, of course this is tf, and that is ti. So now we can do this. So vf minus vi is minus 3.5, 0, 0 meters per second minus 0, 3.5, 0 meters per second divided by delta t or tf, which is 7.0 seconds minus, I bet you could do that in your head, 7 minus 5, I hope so. All right, to subtract the vectors, I subtract each component. So 3.5 minus 0 is, that was easy, minus 3.5, comma, 0 minus 3.5 minus 3.5, comma, 0 meters per second, all divided by 2.0 seconds. And so now you have to be able to divide 3.5 by 2, which I could do on my calculator, but I think I can do that in my head because it's 1.75, yes. So I get minus 1.75 comma minus 1.75 comma 0 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration, the average acceleration of the hockey puck between 5 and 7 seconds, given the numbers I gave you. So that's just a simple example of how do I use this equation with a full-on vector. Second problem. Problem number three. A particle starts moving with a speed of 12 meters per second in the minus x direction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, it starts v0. It's in moving entirely in the minus x direction, so I know that it's going to be minus 12 meters per second, comma 0, comma 0. Right, it has no y or z. If I take the magnitude of this, I'm going to get 12 meters per second, which is the speed of the particle. So that's its initial velocity. It undergoes a constant acceleration a, which is equal to 5.0 comma minus 2.5 comma 3.7 meters per second squared. The particle starts at the origin. Where is the particle? after 2.0 seconds. Well, if it starts at the origin, another way of saying that is that r0 is equal to 0, 0, 0 in whatever units you want. I'll go ahead and put meters 
on this. Where is the particle after two seconds? Okay, it has a constant acceleration. Because the acceleration is constant, we know we can use this one. R vector is equal to R0 vector plus V0 vector T plus one half A vector T squared. And so now I can just calculate this out. Now there's two ways I could do this. I could write all these things as vectors and keep doing it, or I could do one component at a time. Let's do the one component at a time version because that's just a little bit less overwhelming all at once. So let's start and figure out the x. So x is equal to, and actually in this case, since I'm, it's, I don't even have to do any algebra because it's already solved, right? x is equal to, I'll write it out, x0, which is 0, plus v0xt plus 1 half axt squared. And it's also important to realize this is the initial speed. Because the particle is accelerating, or not initial speed, the initial x component of velocity, because the particle is accelerating, the velocity is changing with time, but that's not what you put here. You put here the initial one. So this is pretty straightforward to do. V0x is minus 12 meters per second, and I multiply that by time. What do I say? After two seconds, so 2.0 seconds, plus one half ax is 5.0 meters per second squared, times 2.0 seconds squared. It's important to square this. Let's make sure the units work. Seconds will cancel seconds. I have seconds squared and seconds, and they're squared, so yay. So I'll end up with meters. That's what I want. So let's go ahead. Can I do this in my head? I probably can do this in my head, actually, right? Because 12 times 2 is minus 24 meters. 1 half times 2 is, oh, no, but that's 4. Ha <laughs> ha. 1 half times 4, 2 squared is 4, is 2 times 5 plus 10 meters equals minus 14 meters. Right, so that is x at t equals 2 seconds. Let's do y. y is going to be y0, which is 0, plus v0y, which is 0, times t. I won't even multiply by t because we know what happens when you multiply by 0. Plus 1 half times ay is minus 2.5 meters per second squared times t, which is 2.0 seconds squared. And this one also, it turns out I can do in my head. Once again, we have seconds squared, we'll cancel seconds squared. One half times two squared, well, two squared is four, so that's two, 2.5 times two is five. So I get equals minus 5.0 meters. So that's y, and then finally z, and this one I bet I won't be able to do in my head, but we'll see. Starts at the origin, so that's z zero, plus v0z is zero times t, I won't multiply it because it's times zero, plus one half, az is 3.7 meters per second squared times 2.0 seconds squared, so that's t squared, right, from, well from here because I'm doing the z component. So again, two squared is four divided by two is two, two times 3.7 is 7.4, I can actually do it in my head, right, three times three is six, 0.7 times 0.7 is 1.4, you get 7.4. So that's 7.4 meters. So at t equals 2.0 seconds, the position of the particle is minus 14 meters, comma, minus 5.0 meters, comma, 7.4 meters. Right? And that's where the particle is. So it starts at the origin. It starts at the origin and it's moving in the minus x direction when it starts. So we'll make this x, we'll make that y, we'll make that z. It's going to end up at negative x, negative y. So negative x, negative y, but positive z. It ends up there. So it starts here and it's accelerating. So it starts fast, it's being pulled back in x, it's going down in y, up in z. And so it'll do some sort of three-dimensional path curving like that. If you kept going for a while, it would eventually turn around and come back in X, because it has this positive X acceleration. You notice it slowed down. If it kept going, eventually it would have a positive X velocity, and eventually, it, again, a positive X. Man, it already have a positive X velocity. Let's think about that for a moment. It does? No, it doesn't. Five. So its X velocity is five meters per second times two seconds. Because um, so it starts with minus 12 
A times T is 5 times 2, that's 10 meters per second is how much delta V is, because A times delta T, 5 times delta T is delta V, so it's still going in the negative direction because it has a negative 2 meters per second velocity. What I just said was, this isn't part of the question, but I'll go ahead and write it out, is um, at T equals 2 seconds, I have Vx is equal to Vx0 plus Axt, Right, and so Vx0 is minus 12 meters per second, and then Ax is 5.0 meters per second, and T is 2.0 seconds. Right, so that's minus 12 plus 10, that comes out to minus 2 meters per second. So it's still going to the left when it gets there, but it'll turn around pretty soon. That's the third problem. We should do more. Problem number four. You're sitting in a car at rest. A car passes you, moving at a constant speed of 60 miles per hour, <laughs> blows by you. And you're all, uh-uh. At what rate must you accelerate in order to catch up with the car in exactly 20 seconds? How do you do that? OK, so let's set this thing up. I'm going to start by drawing pictures to make sure I sort of know what's going on. So this is me. You can tell because I'm all smiling and I have no hair. And here's another car that goes by me and it's moving at a constant speed, so I'm going to call myself car A, and I'm going to say car B, uh, VB, in fact, I'll give its full velocity, is 60 miles per hour, comma, zero, comma, zero. Now, the first thing I'm going to note about this is we only have to worry about the x components of things. Everything's going in the same direction. Nothing moves in y, nothing moves in z. This is probably the last vector I'll draw in this problem, but I wanted to make sure you realize it is a vector. This is car B. You know it's not me because the guy is very angry. You're thinking, wait, I thought you were all angry. And he also has big long hair trailing out the back of his window because he's going so fast. Okay, that's car B. The question is, how, at what rate I start, at time t equals zero, he passes me. And if I start accelerating right as he passes me, at what rate must I accelerate in order to catch up with him after 20 seconds? So let's think about what's going to happen is that I start at rest and he's blowing by and I start moving and I'm going to speed up, speed up, speed up and eventually catch up. If I drew motion diagrams for this as a function x as a function of position, let's say uh, car A, I should have used colors in the beginning, we'll say car A is purple and we'll use uh, green for car B here. It's not a very good pen, I'll use this one. All right, so car B is moving at a constant speed. So they both start at the same position. They two so it's moving at a constant speed of 60 miles per hour. Constant speed means the rate of change, delta x over delta t, or the slope doesn't change. I start moving. I start at rest, which means initially my speed is zero. Which means initially I've got a flat line here. But I start accelerating, and eventually I want to catch up with him. And what I want is to catch up right at 20 seconds. Well, okay, so what I want is for xA to equal xB at t equals 20 seconds. What is axA? This is what the question is. So now what I can do is I can say, well, what is xA, what is xB? Well, xA, and both of these things, I'm going to use the equation x equals x0 plus v0 xt plus 1 half axt squared. xa, that's me. Well, so xa is equal to x0 is 0. v0 x is also 0 times t plus 1 half axt squared. And this is the thing I want to find. And here's what I should do. I shouldn't just say AX. I should a, say A sub AX because there's two different cars here. I have to keep track of it. And I want this to be equal to XB at T equals 20 seconds. XB will also at time T equals 0. We're defining where we're starting as 0. Is 0 plus VBX, which is the same as V0BX, but it's not changing. So I'm just going to call it VBX times c t plus zero because the other car is moving at constant speed so it has no acceleration. So what I need is one half a a x t squared is equal to v b x times t. I know what t is. 
I know what VBX is, AAX is what I'm after. So let's just solve the algebra. AAX is equal to, I multiply both sides by 2 VBX. I need to divide both sides by T squared. And so I had a T, I'll just go ahead and write it out. I had a T over T squared, so I divided both sides by T squared. And this squared will cancel this T, so then I'm just left with 2 VBX over T. So that's going to be equal to 2 times 60 miles per hour divided by 20 seconds, or 6 miles per hour per second. That's the acceleration I'm after. Um, I think I skipped. No, I'm good. Six miles per hour per second. Note that after 20 seconds, I will be going at a speed of 120 miles per hour, which um, is not recommended on everyday roads. On the other hand, we're doing this on a, on a speed track with uh, professional drivers in a closed setting. Do not try at home. It's all good. Great. So it's six miles per hour second. And now I just have to do that conversion because this is part of what I want. Miles per hour per second. That's great. But I also want it in meters per second squared. So let's figure out. Now I have two sig figs here. So 6.0. Oh, um, yes, it was 60 divided by 10. 6.0 oh miles per hour times seconds. I do the same conversion. 1609.34 meters per mile. I did that in the first problem times one hour, let's put a spastic M, divided by 3,600 seconds. And I'm going to get, wait for it, right? go on, right? uh, I have a meeting, I better go to that, clear. Six, no, six, yay, 1609.34 times 3600 divided by 2.7 meters per second squared. That's an appreciable acceleration. You know, it's like, it's a little more than a quarter of 1G. So I'm really peeling out. <laughs> the sound effects aren't necessary. I'm really peeling out. I mean, they'd be necessary if they were better, but that was a really terrible sound effect. I'm peeling out. So that's what I need to accelerate in order to catch up with that guy. The guy blows by me, and right as he's blowing by, I start accelerating, but he's got this big head start. So even though I step on the gas, I can't keep up with him immediately, because he's already going 60 miles. It takes me some time to catch up with him like that. But then I do, but then at that point, I'm going twice as fast as he is, and so whew, I blow him away. And I'm like, see ya. That's the fourth problem. Next problem is very similar. You shall see. Problem five is similar to problem four, and so I've left some of problem four on the board because we'll need it again. It's the same kind of thing. You're sitting at rest in your car, and another car blows by you. At the instant it blows by you, you start accelerating, but now instead of saying you want to catch up in 20 seconds, you want to reach the finish line first, or at worst, at the same time. So now what you want is to catch up within 1.0 better 1.0 miles so what this says is that I want now notice that this still happens at the same time as each other I want to figure out what must the acceleration be so that both of these guys reach 1.0 mile at the same time uh, okay well so we're gonna have the same kind of thing right so XA has to equal XB at some time has to equal 1.0 mile is what we're after. Um, so how do you do this? Well, here's the simplest way to think about it, is I could just figure out what is this time? What is the time t that it takes car uh, number b, the one that's moving at a constant speed, to get there? So I know that xb is equal to, it starts at 0, plus vbx times t, right? So vbx times t. Um, I want xb to be one mile, so xb over vbx is equal to t is 60 miles per hour. Um, I'm doing this wrong. It's 1.0 miles is the xb I want. Divided by 60 miles per hour, I get 1 60th of an hour, which is the same as one minute. Okay, That's the time. 
now I want to say, okay, in that time, me, I want to cover the same distance. So here's me, xA, again, I start at zero, but I also have my initial velocity is zero, so there's a zero term there, plus one half a a x t squared, okay? Well, now I know, I know what xA is gonna be. I also know what the time needs to be, 1 60th of an hour, so I can use that to figure out a a x. So let's just solve it again. It's gonna be the same thing that we solved last time. a a x is equal to two x a all over t squared. It's not exactly the same thing, but it's a similar kind of thing. Right. So that's going to be equal to times 1.0 miles divided by um, t squared, so that's 1 60th of an hour squared. This is going to be a huge number. This is a very difficult catch up to do. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. Um, so 2 times, where's my calculator? Here it is. Two. Um, so this is actually I can do this in my head, right? Because it's two. Ah, oh, this is miles per hour squared. So you'll see what's going on here. It's actually not as big as it sounds. Two times one divided by sixty squared is two times thirty-six hundred. That's what sixty squared is. Miles per hour squared. That is an acceleration unit. It's just not one that we like very well, but that's fine. And two times thirty-six hundred is of course seventy-two hundred miles per hour squared. So let's go ahead and convert this acceleration into both of the other units that we like. So the first one is um, 7200 miles per hour squared. I'm going to convert it to miles per hour per second. So I just need to multiply by one hour divided by 3600 seconds and I get 2.0 miles per hour per second. That's not a bad acceleration really at all. And now let's convert again. Let's actually write it instead of mph over second. Let's write it miles over hours seconds. Let's convert again. Well, I need 1609.34 meters per mile. And now I need to get rid of the um, hours. So I have one hour over 3600 seconds again. And so when all is said and done, Two miles times 1609.34 times, did I do that right? I believe that, 3600 divided by, I get 0.89 meters per second squared, which is uh, still actually a fairly respectable acceleration as far as cars go, but that's not an extreme acceleration at all. I was very wrong when I said that earlier. So this is actually easier than the one we had before. Catching up with the car a mile later isn't so bad. Once again, notice when I catch up, I am now going faster than that car, so I will then blow by him. And then he might want to accelerate and we'll just chase each other for the rest of time. There's a Larry Niven story about that, except that they're flying Bussard ramjets, which are spaceships. Never mind, I'm way off topic. There, there are some problems, example problems about acceleration. I hope that helps you figure out how to do things and helps you for the homework that you will see on Wednesday. Goodbye. Thank you.